on top. Dear Scott Morrison, I saw you on last night's news where you assured us Australians that our democracy is being upheld because unlike some countries, our marches are not being met by bullets. So then why do I still feel like I have a target on my back? I speak for all women, Mr. Morrison, when I say we still feel under attack. Because somewhere in Australia, a 10-year-old girl's blue and white checkered uniform is being stained with tears. Sat on the bathroom floor, she fears facing her male peers who walk the halls and whisper names in her ears. Somewhere in Australia, a 15-year-old girl is being harassed on the train. She clutches at her coat tightly, prays that one day she won't have to clutch her keys between her knuckles or walk with a friend in case she runs into trouble. Somewhere in Australia, a 20-year-old girl flinches every time she hears a noise. Her scars serve as reminders for what she fears for herself and her young boys. She blames herself even though others tell her she couldn't have known. But now with this baby in hand, she fears leaving the house on her own. You called it a triumph of democracy, Mr. Morrison, but I wouldn't call it a triumph that at the age of 17, I had to march in the streets for justice because my government so casually disregarded sexual assault allegations as what just is. And you see, was it not these very same halls that housed the horror of Higgins, these very same walls that bore witness to the objectification of women, and you see, these very facts wouldn't pay me so much if I couldn't see how these same sexist stereotypes slithered down to society. Since the age of 13, I've been separated into guys and girls sports teams, told I hit or run like a girl, but what does that even mean? Since the age of 15, I've been scared to walk the streets or be left alone. Even in the close company of those I have known, I have awoken to a well where my body is no longer my own. Now, at the age of 18, I hear you say that as a father, what if it were your girls? I hear you say they were sisters and mothers and daughters, but I can't help but wonder, is it not simply enough to say they were someone? So, through our silencing and suffering, let us find solidarity. Gasping for air, united, let us take us first breath. For we as women have been tossed and turned and tumbled in a sea of sexist slurs and systematic segregation. But now, let it be heard. We remain and we will not be lectured about sexism and misogyny by this man. Not now, not ever. Because we will speak out about our experiences and reclaim the stigma of shame. We will stand up to those who silenced us and in doing so break free from these patriarchal chains. And we will be bound by our bruises and battles and braced to fight another day because we won't stop. Not until justice has come out on top.